Welcome to Sunday Fun Day Learning with Nikki. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, there are a couple of supplies that we need to get from our supply bag before we start. Um, the first, um, when we're talking about our story today, you will need your Play-Doh that Miss Marilyn got for you. It should be in your bag. Um, then there should be a sheet of paper. There's actually two sheets. You just need one. And this is um, what you'll need. You'll also need some paints. The paint should be in your bag and then in your bag there should also have been a white crayon so hopefully you still have those crayons in there and you can find the white one okay we're going to use that for our craft later on today the lesson that we're going to read and learn about is in the gospel of john and it's chapter nine and so if you want you can read along with me but it's actually, you don't have to, but John is in the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. So it's the fourth book of the Bible of the New Testament. So like I said last week, the New Testament isn't quite in the middle of the Bible. It's going to be more towards the back because the Old Testament is so long. Um, but then you can turn to John and then we're going to read chapter nine. Okay. So if you need to get all your supplies ready, go ahead and do that. Press pause and then come back here. All right, I'll see you in a sec. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus told them, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and then put it on the man's eyes. Go, Jesus told him, wash in the pool. So the man went and washed and came home seen. Hi, so we just heard the first part of the story about Jesus giving sight to the blind man. But the story isn't quite over yet. Let's listen and hear what happens next. So, the man was washed and he came home seen. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man? Who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am that man. How then were your eyes opened? They demanded. He replied, a man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought him to the Pharisees. Now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened 
the man's eyes was a Sabbath. And the Sabbath is a day of rest. And it is a day, is one of the Ten Commandments, where we are supposed to rest. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. We're going to pause right there for a minute. And I'm going to get out my Plato. And I want you guys to think about this. So the Pharisees, we talked about the Pharisees before in the lesson about Nicodemus. And they expected the Messiah to come. And they had put him in a box. And they had decided this is what he should look like. He should look just like this. Okay? And when Jesus didn't fit that, they didn't believe that he could be the Messiah. So you guys have Plato, and you also have like the, the top of your Plato. So what I want you to do is just put the indentation on your Plato. Look, mine made a cute little penguin. See that? All right, so this is kind of like the Pharisees expected him to be like this, okay? But then when Jesus came, maybe he looked like this. What's going to happen if I try to put this on this? Well, let's see and find out. Huh. It's no longer really a penguin anymore, but it's a duck. So, it doesn't work, does it? We can't have a penguin and a duck on the same piece of Play-Doh. So the Pharisees wanted it wanted Jesus to be a certain way if he was going to be the Messiah. And Jesus wasn't that way. He was different. He was better. So let's keep reading and hear what ha happens next. Others asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, and now I see. Then they asked him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe that I am the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, 
What, are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. All right. So sometimes we talk about um, not being able to see. And in this case, we're actually going to talk about how our hearts, whether our hearts can see or not. And um, if you take your eyes and you cover up your eyes, you can't see very well, can you? And if you were to walk around the house like that, it would be really scary because you might bump into something. Ugh. And you don't want to do that. Well, it's even scarier whenever you cover the eyes of your heart. And whenever we are talking about Jesus and he's helping the blind man see, we he did heal the blind man and helped him see. But also, the Pharisees... Jesus didn't fit into their penguin, did he? He didn't. And their eyes to their heart were not open. They were not looking for Jesus. They were looking for what they wanted to look for. And they were really concerned about themselves. And they didn't, they, they had blinders on. Like they couldn't see. Like if you do this and you try to look at the side, you can't see anything. Jesus wants us to take those blinders down and to, um, to look around us and see God's work in all different places. And sometimes you can see Jesus whenever you're walking around outside and you hear a beautiful bird singing or you hear children in the background playing and having fun. Sometimes you can see Jesus whenever um, you're just sitting and praying to God and you can just feel him in your heart and sometimes like we talked about last week if you're plugged into Jesus like singing and worshiping and doing all those things you'll see Jesus a little bit more clearly but it is hard right now and that's okay in those times when it's hard we just need to talk to Jesus a little bit more we need to talk to God we need to pray to him and then we can maybe see him a little bit more clearer. And you can, you can shine your light on other people so that they can see Jesus. And maybe they'll shine their light back on you. I'm just, I'm just so ready for us to do our craft right now. So I'm going to go get my supplies and get them all ready. And then we'll do our craft. All right. See you in a second. For our activity today, you should have some pieces of paper and a um, white crayon and then some watercolor paints. So first what I want you to do is I want you to draw anything you want on this piece of paper. Okay, well I drew something and I can't see it. I, I just don't know where it could be. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open up my paints. And inside my paints I have a little paintbrush and a bunch of little paints. But before these paints will work, it needs some water. So let me go get a little bit of water. All right, so now I have a little bit of water, and I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water, get it nice and wet, and then dip it in whichever color paint I want. I'm going to try some yellow. I'm going to do yellow up here, and we're going to see if my creation pops out. can kind of see something there. Maybe I'll try some orange down here. And it's like magic when I'm 
doing this because all of a sudden I can see things that I couldn't see before. Now, that's interesting that I say that because sometimes it's hard for us to see Jesus, especially when things are not going the way we want them to go. Like right now, whenever we're talking about like COVID and some people aren't even able to go to school right now and not able to see their friends. And it's a really kind of a hard time for us right now. And sometimes it's hard to see where in the world Jesus is in all of this. But Jesus is here. Jesus is always with us. Even if we can't quite see him right now, Someday when we're looking back, we can say, oh, I can see how he was working for through us. I can see where you were. And it's just really amazing that Jesus is always going to be there. And like I said before, we have to open the eyes of our heart and then we can see him. And sometimes that's easier said than done. But when we do, we can get a beautiful picture. All right, let's pray. Okay, so let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the amazing miracles that you do every day. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he was able to teach so many about you and about your love. Help to open our eyes, Lord. Help us to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see you. Help us to understand you and help us to seek you in all, all of our days and every time we're playing and sitting still. Help us to look at one another and be able to see your light. We thank you, Lord, for everything, and we are just so thankful for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. And I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.